Alright, hey. So, I want to make this video to touch on something that I view as a negative, um, and something that I think is hurting a lot of players that don't know better in Overwatch, and honestly, in, in probably more than just Overwatch in terms of shooting games. Um, so, I imagine there might be a few people seeing this, or a lot of people seeing this probably, that don't know who I am, have never heard of me, whatever. Um, I'm Carter. I played with Third Impact uh, most recently in North American Contenders, and prior to that, I played with Bermuda, and I won Open Division. Uh, of, damn, I forgot what season. Either last season of 2018, first uh, last season of 2018 or first season of 2018. I forgot. I won that with Bermuda. Um, I'm consistently like 45, mid 45, uh, his game player, and Overwatch was my first FPS. So. Just kind of going straight into it. In Overwatch, the movement is a bit peculiar. There is no movement acceleration, there's no movement deceleration. You're always at your max UPS units per second. Um, now, I don't know what the the number is off the top of my head, the, the units per second that uh, a hero moves at, but what I mean by that is in Counter-Strike and Valorant and many other FPS titles, when you're, at, you're, you're standing still, not moving at all, and you start strafing, you start building up speed until you reach your max velocity. It's not like that in Overwatch. In fact, it's instant in any direction. Even if you're holding down A and you start holding down D, you immediately go full speed in the opposite direction, which leads to you know frustrating movement like this. And now I, I should have had the foresight here to go into. Um, the practice range, or not the practice range, sorry, the uh, third person game mode, and kind of show you what that ends up looking like, but for let's be honest, most people watching this know what a uh, AD couch spamming soldier looks like, it's pretty obnoxious. Um, so yeah, in Overwatch the movement's a bit tough to hit, and to compensate for that we have some forgiving hitboxes here and there, um, shit like that, right? But, I've noticed something recently. Actually, it's been brought to my attention recently that there are a lot of people, not a lot, sorry, God, there's two or three people that are either coaches or uh, players in Tier 2 that are able to figure out who I am, like figure out that a Smurf account is me just by watching me play. And it's not based off of the decisions I make in game or anything like that. It's apparently, I've been told, entirely based off how I aim. And that's really interesting to me because how I aim should not be different from what people are used to seeing, but it is. And that's weird to me. Um, because of this movement in Overwatch, a lot of players are have figured out for themselves that they really like to tense up when they're tracking, in particular. They really, really, really like to make sure that they can hit this target, right? They, they go all the way with their forearm, and they, they tense up. And you can see that with with their uh, their mouse movement in-game. They, they tense up a lot. And this used to be me. Up until about a few months ago, this was me. So, this feels good at first for players to try, because it does let you react faster to counter strafing. It does. But it also hinders your consistency a great deal. Doing this and deciding that this is simply how you're going to aim is something that will hurt you as a player in the long run. And I promise that. And it's for more reasons than just consistency. It can result in injuries. Well, that's it. Actually, it can it can just result in injuries, and also it, it'll cause you to be inconsistent because the amount that you tense is never going to be consistent. You're never gonna like every time you sit down, right? Especially for those of us who are ADHD, like myself, every time you sit down, everything you, it's really beneficial to have everything be the same. How you sit, how far your monitor is, where your mouse pad is, how you hold your mouse, where your keyboard is, uh, the height of your chair, the height of your desk, all that. And so. When you add something into the mix that you simply cannot control to a T, you're just throwing something in the pot that can cause inconsistencies for yourself. Um, now, not to say that you should never tense up. There are some points 
in a game where a little bit of tension is beneficial, specifically at extremely long ranges. Um, when you're playing his scan, extremely long ranges, it's perfectly fine to tense up a little bit. But you should never tense up to the point where you can't hold it for a few minutes without being um, uncomfortable. It should just be a little bit of pressure at extremely long ranges. And the reason for this is because once someone is very, very, very far out, you don't, you know, your need for these sweeping movements is gone, right? And your need for these very precise pixel adjustments is always going to be there at that, that long range, right? And so tensing up just a little bit, it's perfectly fine there. If there's somebody that's right next to you, like a tracer who's like strafing around you, right? Or a Lucio or something, a little bit of tension is perfectly fine. It never hurt anyone in that, in that scenario. But not a lot, definitely probably not as much as you're using right now if you're watching this and you're like a tracer player or something. Um, so really quick, for everybody watching this that cares, Go into the training range right now, and go up to a bot on Tracer or Soldier or something, preferably Tracer, and just try to stay on target. Now, I actually, my sense is a little bit lower on this account for Tracer, but so we might be able to see an example of that. So I'm on 804 right now, and I, I don't want to tense up at all, and I want to just strafe around this target and one clip it. Right? Easy enough. Completely fine. Whatever. Everybody's done this a thousand million times. But do it without tensing entirely. Brilliant. Right? Now, sending your crosshair on the yellow, the eye, keep it there without firing. See how I'm lagging behind a bit? It's because 804 for me is too low to play Tracer on. So I prefer playing on 805. <laughs> So still, I'm, I'm still a little bit off, but I'm just coming from being on 804. So it's not that bad. So 805 is obviously a great deal better for me to play on on Tracer, because it lets me stay on target much easier without tensing. Now, on heroes like uh, McCree, Widow, etc., you should never ever tense except at those extremely long ranges. Um, at which point a little bit of tension, like I said, will, will go a long way with uh, helping you land that precise shot. Now, a lot of Tracer players and Genji players are going to be really weirded out by this notion, I th I'd, I'd, I'd imagine. Because I know, I know Candlestick was extremely confused as to why I stopped tensing. Um, just try it. The, the, a lot of you guys, you ever, you ever go up to a target that you definitely should kill? Like a half HP Lucio, and you put like five shots into him and then he pops his amp? For heals, and you somehow potato your clip. You probably wouldn't do that if you uh, if you stop tensing up. That would happen way less. And there's a few reasons for it, but I find the number one reason, um, the thing that helped me a lot when I stopped tensing up, was I had to stop relying on the fact that I could adjust my crosshair so quickly. Right. There are inconsistencies that it causes and all that, and it does hurt your aim. But one thing it, it tensing up does give you is it gives you the ability to just quickly kind of snap and be pre extremely precise with those snaps, right? So, one thing I realized is that when I stopped tensing up and I started playing tracking heroes again, the Moto one trick, um, the thing I realized is that. I paid a lot more attention to not only staying on target, but staying center. It actually helped my aim a great deal. And I think it will help you guys too. So, give it a shot, um, and let me know what you think. Also, stop holding your mouse super tightly. It doesn't help you. It hurts you. It's the same concept. Stop holding your mouse extremely tightly. It is not good for you. It is not good for your aim. There's, there's, there's a gray area. Not a gray area. Sorry. There's an area of pressure on your mouse that is good for you, and you can find that. But I guarantee it is not an extremely tight grasp. Okay. 
So experiment with it. Some people, they hold their mouse as lightly as possible. And they, they use like maybe the um, a ridge on the side of the mouse beneath the uh, mouse four and five to actually make sure they're able to lift up their mouse. Because they, they just don't have any pressure. Some people play like that. And they like it. Some people need a little bit more. And I do. So I, I actually push in just ever so slight with my thumb. And then on the same um, part of the mouse, but on the opposite side, I push in ever so slightly with my pinky. And that gives me just a little bit of pressure that I need to make sure I can pick up my mouse without dropping it and um, swap targets. That's it. But yeah, um, give it a shot. T tension in your arm, your forearm, your wrist, etc. I promise you, if you're just paying attention to it and you actively try to pick and choose when you tense up, You'll be a better player, you'll be hitting more shots, it'll be easier for you, and you'll be healthier and more consistent. So I want to know um, what your guys' thoughts are on it. Uh, those of you guys who give this a shot, oh, feel free to update me. Like I want to know how it goes for you, if you have questions, etc. let me know.